Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining this uh, Kitty Nano Talks. So today we have the pleasure to have here Professor Michael Pierre Lorenzo from Federal University of Espírito Santo. He's going to talk about uh, AI in uh, material science and chemistry. So thank you, Professor, for accepting this invitation and giving this talk for us. Uh, just a reminder before we start that you can leave your questions or comments in the chat or wait to the end of the and to the end of the talk so to raise your hand and uh, ask uh, with your voice or questions. So again, thank you, Professor, and now the, the stage is yours. Okay, okay. Uh, so thank you for the invitation from Professor Juarez. Thank, thank you, Rafael. And uh, so we are going to talk about the quest for automa automation for structural elucidation of materials in the molecular clusters. So <clears throat> let's go. Okay. So when we think about artificial intelligence, first we have to think about the chemical space. So the chemical space is everything that we try to do around the world as chemists and as scientists in this field of material science, for instance, our molecular physics. I mean, we wish to get new materials. We, we wish to understand mechanisms. We wish to design new catalysts, whether in homogeneous or heterogeneous catalysis. And so we, we play with the periodic table for new compounds, organics, in organic chemistry. And uh, we, we manage the variables to get new experiments. And uh, we also wish to do structural elucidation. So everything of this is the chemical space, which is huge, around 10 to 100. And it's huger even than the, the, the number of atoms in the universe. So here we are going to, to show by bringing two problems uh, as uh, uh, we are going to show by, by from just two problems, how AI can help us to provide automatic structural elucidation of vacancies, problem one, and the problem two, uh, automatic structural elucidation of molecular cluster by using genetic algorithm. So we have here the problem 1A, which we are going to discuss artificial intelligence to uh, structural elucidation of vacancies in carbon allotropes and the perovskite oxygen vacancies as well. So problem two, we are going to show you some results by using the DFTB in the genetic algorithm for the water 20 molecular cluster, water 10, water 20, and the sodium with water 20. So that is our problem that we are going to tackle and show you the methodology involve artificial intelligence here. So about the water, it's quite interesting. I'm reading this Alan Turing uh, biography. And at some moment of the book, it's mentioned that uh, Turing tried to do research in water from the specialist at that time, in the last century, uh, Fowler. And uh, Alan made no progress by working with water. Water is very challenging, you know. And uh, so Alan gave up of water, but he gave us the machines to model water. It's quite interesting. So, but what do we want with artificial intelligence? So I, I like this analogy that I'm going to bring to you. There is account of Jorge Luis Borges from Argentina, writer. And there is the account, which is the name of the book also, which is the Aleph. And uh, the Aleph is defined in this count, which is beautiful count, is one of the points in space that contains all other points. And I believe that it is what we try to do with science or math, math modeling, and even, of course, statistics and artificial intelligence. We wish to find some models that we can tackle and follow of all of these points in space. So, and the one nice moment of this count is when he saw uh, the, the character, saw the Aleph. I saw the Aleph, that secret and the conjectured object 
whose name is common to all men, but which no man has looked upon, the unimaginable universe. So maybe that is what we wish with AI. So I, 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 I try to, to actually follow my, my career thinking about this question that I made by my, to myself. How to do, deal with the infinity by knowing so little about the finite? May we get inspired by ancient Greek literature and uh, invoke the god of, of automaton, of automation? Yes, we wish so. So Hephaestus, it's nice because Hephaestus was a Greek god and uh, it was one of the first times that the, the automata or automation word appeared in the, in the history of humankind before Christ. And uh, Hephaestus was a god uh, of the work and he, he worked in a forge and he built robots to uh, uh, code automatons to help him to do his swords and, uh, and the shields for the gods. And uh, it's quite interesting. So we wish to invoke this god of automaton to help us to tackle this infinity. So I'm going now to talk about artificial intelligence by using the active learning method. How I see artificial intelligence by thinking in a chemical problem. And uh, this sum up here will show us during this, during this talk, as we will see, what I wish to solve. So here we have the, this alloy, which is doping silicon by aluminum. And we have 330 possibilities. And we have here all the possible computations and the total energies from TFTB calculations in this case. TFTB calculation, uh, actually it's a DFT based on tight binding. It's approximated method that I have worked since my PhD studies. So here we have the, the black distribution with all possible structures. But of course, we, we don't always have uh, resources to do all possible combinations of isotopes of this alloy. So what we wish to do with AI is to get a small sample, which is this blue one here from random, and I try to get the smaller energy here. So we wish to go from here and I find some, some way in order to go to the left here, uh, with fewer computation as possible. We are not interested in describing this distribution correctly. We just wish to get this data and that come from here to there. That is our, our goal. And uh, we are going to show how we can use methods to do this jump. So what is supervised machine learning or and uh, active learning? I'm going to discuss both methods here. So let's think that we have some measurements in the laboratory where we have the P, the pressure of uh, 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 CO2 uh, uh, gas. And we are going to perform measurements of the pressure and the volume. And we have as response, the temperature. So in this case, we have five measurement, measurements and uh, of course, five responses. So in machine learning, we call this variable the descriptor or the features. And the T in our case here, as I define my problem, is our target or objective function. So we have this surface. Of course, it's a simple problem, but it's a didactic one. So my goal is to get from these five data here and I maximize my temperature with few experiment as possible to come from here to there. So how can we do that? That is machine learning. So we have now from this, this data, of course, it's not machine learning yet. We just have the data. And here I set up my problem. But so with machine learning, now it's machine learning. I get these five data here and we create a regression model. In this case, uh, actually it's, it's actual results. 
I made this from a, another software that I have, which is called Machine Learning for Chemistry. In the end, I can mention about briefly about that. And uh, here we have the neural network with bootstrapping for uncertainty quantifications. So we started with just these five data here. The red, the, the blue one are the training data. And the red one is the testing data from neural network. And uh, from the bootstrapping, I just sample this 100 time and I have 100 uh, neural network regression. From that, I get the mean and the average. And this average, as we can see here, is the uncertainty. And the, 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 the green circle here is the, is the mean from the prediction. And here the standard deviation, which is the uncertainty. So now we have the machine learning model where here in the X axis, we have the observed data and here the predicted data, in the Y axis. So that's the step zero. Now I can get some points in the virtual or unexplored space. And uh, these points here from P and the V are not observed yet or computed yet. And uh, now we have these three points. So we have here, this one here for pressure of six in the volume 30 here. And we have for nine and the 10. Here is the pressure nine and here is the pressure 10. The volume is the same. So if I get this data here, of course, when I, I, I wish to maximize, I wish to go to the, 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 the blue star. So if I just think in prediction, which is this mean from the 100 model, I would get this one with higher temperature to try to do the next experiment. Here in the 10, the prediction gives me uh, a mean or the prediction is smaller temperature with smaller temperature than this one. So I would pick this if I just consider the prediction, the pure prediction, which we call exploitation. But if I consider the uncertainty, which is the exploration to go farther to the potential energy surface where we wish to go or the search space, in this case, I consider also the uncertainty. So the uncertainty plus the prediction would be the, the better point that I would tackle, would get to the next to, to do the next experiment. And I do so, I can compute this point here. And uh, in just one step, I can get the global maximum here within my defined search space. So that is active learning. When we use regression to get the, 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 the prediction, which is the exploitation, plus its uncertainty, which is the exploration. And uh, we are going to show from acquisition functions uh, or decision-making, how we can use exploitation and exploration to, 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 to do the search on the uh, uh, unexplored space. So if you continue, we are going to, to do these steps, even by finding the global maximum that I was interested, the maximum temperature, I can have better models, uh, the training in the, the test set. And uh, the question is, what did the machine learning, what did the machine learn with this data? The Van der Waals equation for a real, a real CO2 gas. So now we have a, a picture of what is machine learning and uh, what is active learning. Active learning uses machine learning with uncertainty and the prediction to make inference for new discoveries experiments. So now that we have this abstract or of resume of this method, let's apply that for uh, vacancies. So we have a software which is called QML Material, a quantum machine learning software for material design and the discovery. And uh, we have the implementation in this method, a lot of possibilities of automatic structural elucidation by using active learning. And uh, here I'm going to present to you the recent results of these methods applied for vacancies. So 
the QML material actually uh, can be fought by by this scheme. So let's say that we we have a, a atomic cluster with which is sodium twenty. Just an example, and uh, I have this sodium twenty cluster. We randomly get twenty initial structure, which is my uh, my initial population or initial database. So here I have this 20 and I compute, I perform DFT or DFTB calculations from these 20 random isomers. And after that, we get from this 20, the machine learning regression. From this regression, I have a, a, a machine learning model. And then now here I use from this step to this step here, here I have the part of the decision making in the step C. So step A is the sampling, B is the calculation, and C we have the decision making where we use machine learning and by the exploitation and the exploration by using the expected improvement. So I got just 20 initial running structures and I, I do some mutation or crossover from genetic algorithm operators, and I create the unexplored space. So let's say that our unexplored space has 500 structures, not computed, just structures from plane cut splice or GA operators or mutation. Now I you compute, I apply the, the machine learning regression from this 20 in this, in the, I, I try to predict these 500 structures and the compute the certainty. So from that, I, I compute for these 500 structures, the expected improvement. And I select the structures in this 500 space with the 20 highest expected improvement to do the next calculations. So I create the structures for, from this new 20. This is new, let's put that this is star. Now from, from the expected improvement, I compute that. And now I have 20 plus 20 star. And I do, I, now I have more data. My machine learning regression will improve. And I generate again, more structures in the unexplored space, apply the expected improvement, which brings exploitation and exploration. And the cycle, and I compute another 20. And the cycles goes on goes on until we find the global minima structure. So that is the active learning. And uh, we can apply that for molecular clusters. Uh, sorry, atomic cluster. This case here is atomic cluster, sorry. And uh, we can apply that for doping and the vacancies. So that is, but one important thing by AI, AI is actually the environment. plus the agent. So what is the agent? The agent is this decision making here, where we use data to make decision in the unexplored or virtual space, this 500, for instance. And the environment is everything. Is the part of the DFT or DFTB population, is the part where the, the structures are generated. I mean, the inputs of the program are generated here in this step A. So everything is in the environment. And the part where we have the machine learning and the, the acquisition function for decision making here, this is the agent. So we define the AI based on active learning. So here I, I'm going to, to discuss more about the expected improvement. So here we have the exploitation. Exploitation performs global search, local search, search in regions that the potential energy surface is known. And the, from the uncertainty, we have the exploration. That can give us uh, ways to go further to the potential energy surface in an explored space. And here we have the cumulative density function and the probability density function uh, which are statistical functions, and uh, it will balance the, the, the amount 
of exploitation and the exploration based on this, this wave here. So here we have that uh, uh, surface plot, uh, a limit surface, uh, where we have here the exploitation and the exploration and the values of the expected improvement in this range here. So what does that mean? It means that I'm, we are going to get those structures in the unexplored space. And those structures, of course, they are described by the scriptors, which are these axes here. Okay. J means that we are in the unexplored space. And here we are going to always try to get those descriptors or structures where we have the higher exploitation and the higher uncertainty, which will give us the higher value of the expected improvement. So for example, here we have the blue training data, red testing data, and the, the green, the virtual space, the points that were not observed yet. And here we have the global minimum. So in this case, we are going to get the, 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 blue, the, the green point where we have the higher uncertainty and the, the prediction closer to the global minimum, or I mean, the maximum value. We, of course, we don't know the global minimum, but always the value which is higher. So we pick this point in the compute, we can get closer to the global minimum here. So that's the idea of the expected improvement. It is a, a, an acquisition function it comes from the from the decision making in artificial intelligence and uh, it also is used in reinforcement learning which is well used and uh, it got more uh, uh, famous after the go game from the deep mind solved by reinforcement learning active learning i, I see that is quite similar to reinforcement learning uh, uh, of course there are some differences which is not our proposal here to, to bring, but it's quite similar. So, some applications. So, uh, we have here this problem, three, three carbon vacancies in a new unit cell of graphite with 36 carbon atoms. The, the chemical space, of course, it's a discrete search. We have around 7,000 possibility. For C60 in the four vacancy, we have around five high, 500 thousand possibilities in a discrete search without considering symmetries, of course. And uh, here we have the results from applying the QML material where we have implemented active learning. So for graphite with free vacancies, we started with just 500 structures and we have 20 independent ones. It's interesting because these five, for, for which one of these independent ones as the method is stochastic, the active learning. For, from these 20 independent ones, every time I just, with the same input, I run the active learning, a new sampling from a random sampling with different uh, random structures are generated. I mean, these 20 random, these 20 independent ones were done in a way that the initial population is random and different from each independent one. So in this case, I can we can contemplate the powerful of the method in dealing with different initial uh, 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 distribution of the, the random structures from these vacancies. So we have here, for example, we use it, uh, the expected improvement. We use it another acquisition function, which is called the lower confidence bound by changing the degree of the, of the uncertainty with one to five, random search. And here we also use it um, different descriptor. The descriptor here is the l out sum matrix and the, sum, the sign matrix here, l out sum matrix and the sign main matrix for periodic systems. And we even compare it to, with GA. So what is this cumulative success? So we know the global minimum in this case. Uh, and uh, this cumulative success is the number of times in the 20 independent ones, the global minimum was found as a function of the new local optimizations. So we can see here that with the, 
the lower confidence bound and uh, the expected improvement, they bring similar results. And uh, with just 100 uh, local optimizations, we can find the global minimum in just 20 independent runs. So we can compare with the random search, the, the GA, which is this green one. We have a, a GA material, which brings GA for vacancies and the doping, and we use the code. And here we have the GA. So the better performance is from the expected improvement. So here we have other comparisons. So for the C60, we four uh, vacancies. We use the MBTR descriptor. Here now we have a, a, a molecular system. I mean, here it's a solid. I use a descriptor for solid. And here we use the MBTR for uh, molecules. But of course we can use for solids as well, MBTR. So here we, we have, so different kernels of the Gaussian process, the, the regression that I used was Gaussian process, <coughs> machine learning regression. And uh, I compared with random search and the GA and the, the, the active learning performed better. With just few local optimizations, we could find in 20 independent runs the, the global minima. It's interesting because I believe the machine learning with the descriptor, somehow even the chemical, the, the, the full chemical space being huge, I guess that somehow the machine learning and the, the, the active learning method iteratively, they are somehow, I believe, uh, contemplating the symmetry without considering explicitly the symmetry in the problem to reduce the search space. This is just a, a, a thought. I, I did not prove that, but I, I, I have this impression. So the, the last application for vacancy is oxygen vacancy perovskite by using the quantum express or DFT. Here I use the DFTB uh, method, which is cheaper than DFT, and uh, we can tackle huger systems. And uh, here I have the problem of oxygen vacancies in perovskites. So my search space is 20, the 2000, around 2000. And uh, we wish with fewer calculations to find the global minimum structure. So we perform the three independent runs by starting with 980, 980 uh, uh, random vacancies of oxygen. And from that, we created the machine learning regression and the performed active learning. And uh, we could find in all three independent runs, the global minima. The descriptor here is the, I mean, it's putative. We, we don't know if it's actually the global minima, but it's the putative global minima. Here we use the Elwood sum matrix. That is the structure with the vacancies here. That is the, the global minima. So here we have the regression to show to you here. When we have 200 structures uh, and when we found the global minimum by the active learning in set independent run. So the training in the test, we can see that the regression model is quite good. So here are the indexes of the vacancies of oxygen that is our putative global minima. So here uh, uh, there is this interpretation of the structure. We could see that by removing oxygen, uh, we saw a reduction of the titanium sites and the, the coordination number also reduced from six to five. We could see free chemical environments, titanium four, three, and the two, due to the oxygen vacancy. And the, when we plot the, the partial density of states, we could see these states here that are from these different environments of titanium. But one interesting news from this result is that here we have the putative GM, global minimum. And here we have some run the structure that I just got by hand when starting to do this work. So I've got some structure from this perovskite and the remove it randomly by hand, free oxygens in my unit cell. And I performed the DFT from quantum express calculations. And I performed the PDOS. It is metallic. When I do the search by using active learning or AI, we have another structure 
which is our putative, and here we have the behavior as uh, P semiconductor. What does that mean? It means that if we wish to work with noise stoichiometry and uh, even create databases like the material science or material gen, we need actually for noise stoichiometry, we need actually to have structures at least closer to the putative global minima to, to, to have correct electronic properties. Otherwise, if you just get vacancies or defects, even doping by, by chance, we would go in the, in, in the wrong property. We, we would have the wrong property because we are farther to the global minimum. So, I mean, it's necessary for non-stoichiometry and defects modeling to use active learning or the QML material. Okay, now we have the problem two, which is the GA material uh, for genetic algorithm. In particular for this presentation, molecular clusters. So this GA material is a genetic algorithm software for material design and discovery. It's like a broadler of the QML material. We get inspirations from active learning and the GA and the GA active learning to try to, to do this kind of work. It's nice. So this work was is in the final edition now to, to be published. We have the DOI already. And here we have the workflow. And uh, this publication was just for molecular clusters and the vacancies, and the doping. We have a lot of features. And I will show to you later the capabilities of the GA material. So it was uh, it's going to be published soon. And the book we published just for, for molecular clusters, atomic clusters, sorry, atomic clusters and the defects in the interfaces. For molecular clusters, it, it is in progress for another work. So what is the GA? Uh, in this case, we, we get some run structures. It can be defects like dopey vacancy or atomic cluster or even interfaces, clusters on surfaces, for example, or surface reconstruction. We get that randomly, perform some DFT calculations or DFTB, get the population, perform selection crossover, selection for crossover in the, in the mutation. Here's the selection. After the selection, we perform the GA operators and then we have a new selection from the pool of structures in the unexplored space from the crossover or mutation. Here we can get the structures randomly or even use machine learning. Machine learning is inside the GA material. So in the cycles goes on. So again, this workflow is, is the general workflow for, for genetic algorithm as in this particular case implemented in the GA material. But we wish it to go further to problems involving vacancies or doping and uh, atomic clusters and uh, its interfaces. We wish to go to molecular clusters. So I, we, we have a newer version of the GA material where we implemented the global search for molecular clusters, important uh, for microsolvations and uh, adsorption on surfaces and the things like that, as I will show you. So what is the operators? How are the operators behind the GA material for molecular cluster now? Like water, six, water, 20, whatever. So here we have the, the molecule A, B, and the C. So very, very diverse the structures. Here we have the father, and on the right we have the mother. And uh, what we do here, we just get some binary list with one and a zero. So when it is one, it means that we are going to exchange the, for example, here one is in the A molecule. So we exchange the A from the father to the A prime of the mother. So B, no change will, will, will happen. And then the C, we have changed because we have the one. So we change the C with the C prime. So we get, in this case, the crossover and we have the offspring. After doing this 
we join the two structures to get the offspring, we get this substituted A, where we substitute A prime to, to A. So we just perform some rotation and a translation. I mean, we, we do this mating and the perturbate a little bit the molecular cluster. So A prime substitutes this A, B is kept, and the C prime goes to here. And uh, after it goes to here, we perform some perturbation by rotation and the translation. And uh, we have here a random value between zero and a five by multiplied by this random, uh, uh, random, uh, uh, by this random rotation and uh, this random translation. So we have the input here, the input in the in the in the GA material software. We can we can say, we can say the range of the the alpha, beta, and the gamma angles, and also the 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 mean value and the maximum value of the of the angles that we wish to rotate the molecule, based on the center of the mass of the molecule, and uh, we also have the translation from minus three to three, like a box. That is the crossover. So we have the mutation, it's important in GA. In this case, we just get one molecular cluster and we also use the binary list. So, and uh, the ones with one will be slightly changed by rotation. It's coordinates by rotation in the translations. So A is kept, because it's zero. B changes by this perturbation on the structure, and the C changes as well. So uh, we always get from 30 to 60 of the molecules into the molecular cluster to mutate, to mutate or to, to mate, to cross over, like here. So between 30 and 6% of the, the molecules inside, uh, randomly between 30 and 60, are selected to do this mating or mutation. So now we have some in progress results. <laughs> so we have, uh, I've worked with the DFTB method, which is a tight binding based on DFT. It's parametrized, very hard to parametrize that. And we have some parameters to be in two years ago, the GCTC for book water and some clusters of water as well. And we use these DFTB parameters to do these calculations by using the, the new implementation of molecular clusters in the GA material software. So here we have the results for three independent runs for water 10. So we can see here that I performed it 120,000 local optimizations. And uh, here we can see that we need much, uh, uh, we need much higher, uh, uh, we need a greater number of computations compared to, to atomic clusters, at least by using my DFTB potential. And uh, here we have the, the final three independent ones. And uh, here we have the, the structure, which is in the, in the smaller structure in the initial database. The population here is 60. So this configuration here is the smaller uh, configuration of the molecular clusters for water in the initial database. So now these three structures here, they are here. This is the putative GM. We can see that the, the, the energies difference are in the order of milli electron volt. It's quite small. So we have here the, the structures of water 10. We did the same by using machine learning until 5,000 uh, uh, local optimizations. And uh, we did not progress because actually as we have a lot of local optimizations and the, 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 the number of structures gets higher, it almost blows the, the, the memory of the computer. So I need to fix this problem to continue to see if machine learning can help in accelerating this, 
GA4 molecular cluster, but it's implemented. Here we have even nicer, nice training in the test set for five, 6,000 water tail isomers for, for using the MBTR descriptor. <coughs> we can see that the regression is quite good for, for this free here, which is the, this, this here, the dashed line. So now we have water 20, it, which requires, of course, much more local optimizations and the J cycles to get closer energies in independent ones. But here we have some progress. It is in progress again. So that is the configurations in the initial database, the smaller energy. The population here is 60. And here we have the smaller energy found so far, which is, has this configuration here. So sodium, sodium within 20 water molecule. Here we have around 40,000 local optimizations in the GA material. Here we have the, the smaller energy in the 100 initial population. The initial population was set up randomly. And here we have the, the, the putative global minima found so far. It's interesting because you can see that the water molecule are forming around two shells around the, the sodium the sodium ion. And here we can see that we have, so the molecules are above like that. And here they are getting ar around the, the, the sodium. It's quite interesting. I mean, it's like forming a second shell of water. Solvation. So, so where are we going? So the QML material has, uh, so far, a lot of capabilities, and of course, more you come. And uh, we have the, the global search of atomic clusters. We have results that due to time, we, we could not bring to here, but we have the J material where we can do the global search of clusters. And we have also the capabilities of doing the global search of the cluster plus the spin multiplicity, the optimum spin multiplicity. I mean, the active learning for molecular cluster, atomic cluster can get you the, the global minima plus the optimum spin multiplicity. I mean, the search contemplates the electronic part and also the structural part. We have doping. Uh, in cluster, which also includes the search with the spin for, so, for clusters. For solid, we haven't done that yet. We can have doping uh, in clusters and uh, in materials. We can have vacancies. We can have doping in the vacancy. It is in progress. So this one is already published. Two is already published. Three is already published. This is implemented and uh, we are working with some collaborators from Canada by doing this doping and the vacancy in nickel at, uh, in, in Syria nanoparticle doped with nickel. We have also published here the surface adsorption uh, of particles like C60 on an titanium oxide. We have also clusters encapsulated. And we can even uh, do surface reconstruction or even clusters on surfaces. So those are the capabilities of the QML material. The GA material, we have the capabilities, which is the atomic clusters, doping and the vacancy in materials or nanoparticles. Vacancies, we have encapsulated the clusters in the surface reconstruction. All these, one, two, three, four, and the five, is already contemplated in this publication that is coming soon. And this new one that I present to you will be for another work, I hope. So that's it. I'd like to acknowledge the Universidade Federal de Espírito Santo, the fellowship agency of the, our state in Espírito Santo, Professor Denis Salahub, where we have developed these softwares. And uh, uh, we have developed the active learning and the AI 
algorithms for for chemistry and uh, professor Dennis is the the the, the, the main developer uh, of the demo uh, 2k software where we use it intensively in our QML material and the J material for DFT we have professor Patricia Calaminici and Andres Costa the Alain from, from NRC of Canada, Alessandra, where, where she has doing his her PhD in active learning by using our softwares in the uh, IRCA, uh, which is a postdoc, which also is helping a lot with this development. And uh, I, I haven't mentioned, but I have also a, a software which is called MLCAM 4D. When I use it for the 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 for the Van der Waals potential, and the GZ is for experimental design. When we go to the experiment and we have to tackle some variables for synthesis and the prediction of new materials, we can use the software that we are going to work, and we are now working for global optimization by using AI as well. So thank you for your attention. And uh, I end this talk with one of my, my scientific heroes, Alan Turing, where in the last paragraph of uh, his nice paper involving AI, where he brings the, the Turing test, which is known, he's saying the end, we can only see a short distance ahead, but we can see plenty there that needs to be done. So thank you for your attention and if you have some questions and I can try to help to answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor. Very interesting talk. So I will, while people uh, leave their questions, if you have any questions, please write them down the, on the chat box or you can raise your hand and I pass the mic to you. Uh, so, uh, first, uh, a quick question concerning uh, the initial sampling of structures that you need to start uh, building these this models to, to describe. How crucial is it the number and uh, what structures are included in this initial initial sampling for the model to be successful and efficient? So, uh, the, the, the initial uh, database or the initial population, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's quite important. The, the, the way you design your initial database, it's quite important. In these results that I have brought to you here, I just made that randomly because I, I wanted to to I wanted to test the algorithm. So uh, uh, that's those were randomly. And of course, this random process of getting the, 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 the random defects, in this case, vacancies, or even the molecular uh, uh, clusters. Of course, we have some algorithms to do that to be not that bad because they can collapse and the things like that, but it's random in the beginning. But of course, we can improve that uh, by considering more chemical sense during this random initial population. But they are random. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, but you need to see thing that uh, some chemical intuition must be used to to increase the efficiency of the selection, and also I think that it, it is there the risk to be trapped in some uh, configurations if you don't include the, a diverse enough uh, sampling in this initial step. So uh, uh, you mean if uh, uh, I don't know if I could follow the question, but. Of course, we can use a chemical intuition. I mean, we can we can try to develop algorithms or even chemical sense to create a, the initial database. And uh, the, the, the active learning algorithm is quite efficient. And uh, the sample is quite important because, for example, in the case of the vacancy, uh, the same, in the case of the vacancy, we have a discrete search. So uh, actually we can somehow map all the possible vacancy configurations. When we have the atomic cluster, for example, we have to use GA operators to get a better and exported space to apply the, 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 the active learn. So when we have vacancy, actually it's not much a problem, just, just sampling, because it's a discrete search. 
but we know the sites, the sites where we wish to remove. But when we have harder problems like continuous search, which is the case of atomic cluster or molecular clusters, I have shown, actually we can have some traps if we have some collapses of molecules. But of course, we 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 must guarantee that during the evolution of the populations, we we eliminate those uh, structures that are strange, like closer in atoms or too far. <laughs> okay. Uh, concerning the, the vacancy, uh, the, the, the work about vacancies, uh, I'm not sure if I follow it correctly, but uh, during the search for new structures, if, is it only the, the site of the vacancy that has changed or is there some local optimization of the, the structure to, that considers atomic displacements? Yes, it's a, it's a great question. Let me just return. <clears throat> Okay, uh, yes, when uh, we, we perform the, the, the vacancy, so for example, we are going to remove Gs and the Gs and the Gs. Uh, we remove the three of them or four, whatever. And uh, we, 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 we model our problem in a, in a rigid structure, but we perform for the target, the local, local optimization. I mean, the machine learning is built in a rigid structure, but the total energy comes from a local optimization. Of course, in this case, the molecule deforms a little bit. Okay, so so the, the, the machine learning model can consider these displacements to, to compute the, the energy. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, it won't be perfect because my, my I lose a little bit information from the descriptor because the descriptor comes from a cage, fix it. And I have the total energy, which is the target from a local, uh, from a, a small difference, different structure from the local optimization. But it's it's good enough to do this global search. Okay, uh, I have a few questions also concerning the, the codes that you showed. Uh, are they available for distribution? Uh, can you yes. say something about it? Yes, uh, 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 we haven't provided yet because we have a lot of work done. But if you wish, we can. We, uh, so, so far, even written in the papers, just by, by email, I can send you the code. But we are going to provide a website and the things like that. Uh, do, they they have direct, uh, do they have a direct interface with some uh, codes that you showed this, uh, for compute the DFT calculations? Or? Yes, yes. We have, uh, I forgot to mention, uh, both the GA material and the QML material, they have interface with the DFDB plus software, with Demo 2K, uh, with Orca, uh, XTB, has interface with Quanto Express. VASP, I don't have this interface because I don't have the VASP license. And, uh, but we have these interfaces from quantum chemistry codes. Uh, how easily do you think it's for, if, if uh, I use VASP, for instance, to, to put data from VASP in this code, it's, is it a hard task or is no, it no. the right thing? That's... Yes, no, it's, it's easy because actually what the, the QML material, GA material do, what they do is just to, to do IO in the output of the software. So I, we just need to know how to, of course, how to run the VASP. I don't know, actually, I haven't, run the fast uh, and uh, after running that we, of course we have to have a template input and we run and, and the structure that will be in this template input you come from the active learning and uh, the vast will compute it will be called within the QML material the vast will run and uh, we will have the final output from that we get the energy and then the final structure it's quite easy okay so, uh, okay, so it seems we do not have uh, any further questions. So uh, thank you again, Professor, for a very nice discussion and for uh, accepting this invitation. I think maybe, I hope we can stay in touch in the future. So thank you again. So uh, let's end this meeting for, for today. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.